Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Josh Jackson. He's with the University of Kentucky Ag Engineering Specialist there. Good morning. Good morning, Joanna. Well, I'm glad you're here today because we're going to talk about fences and how important it is to maintain good fences. So yeah, fences are one of the assets we have on the farm that has to work 24 seven during the 65 days a week. So you know we need to keep make sure that we keep our animals in where they should be and not damage another person's uh, property or even injure the other individual. But you know, Josh, this winter, we've had some, some complicated weather seasons, um, you know, and we might have some thunderstorms and different things like that. And sometimes if you have quite a bit of fence, Sometimes it's hard to ride that area over and over just to make sure that there might not be a limb on it or something like that that could be, you know, messing with either our electricity or whether the cattle can get out. So a lot of times when we're looking at maintenance of our fence lines, we're thinking about it from a cost standpoint per foot. And so five to eight percent of our initial cost is actually related to uh, maintenance of our fence lines. And so this could be anywhere from one cents per foot to about uh, 18 cents per foot if it's woven wire. And, you know, really looking for different ways to potentially monitor fence lines. One of the aspects we explored here a little bit at UK was using drones to monitor our fence lines. And, you know, that would be an interesting thing. People might say, well, is it worth me buying a drone to be able to, to monitor these fence lines? And I know you guys have done work on that. So, you know, looking at it, there is a... Um, a lot of break-even speed and there's actually break-even distance of the fence line to check. So we need at least about for the drone to break even with somebody walking, uh, that we need about 7,300 foot of fence to actually monitor and the drone speed would have to go at about 7.5 miles an hour. And that also takes into account the time it takes to set up the drone and tear down the drone and actually do the analysis for that. So we can actually put that 7,300 foot is kind of our, our benchmark for you know how much fence line you need to actually check with the drone. But you know, that's, that's just for that aspect, but thinking about it from a cost standpoint, you know, you don't have to, there's a time cost to it because you don't have to open as many gates. You can actually fly over all the gates. So that's, a, that's really a benefit a lot of our producers who utilize them see is that they don't have to go through a lot of fence lines. We do have to maintain visual line of sight as part of our FAA Part 107 regulations, but uh, if we can ensure that, then yeah, I can definitely save a lot of time on inspecting fence lines. And, you know, I was thinking about, you know, when we had that week long of snow, um, do the drones fly in colder temperatures like that? So that, that, they can be, they're functional. Like the only thing you can't really operate them in the rain because we're supposed to maintain a visual line of sight of three miles. Um, but, you know, they, they can be functional and they're really good. So a lot of these older fence lines with uh, a lot of the ash trees, which are falling down, we had the ice storm as well uh, in our area. And so they can be quite effective for monitoring our fence lines, ensuring you know, where they've fallen down, where actions need to be taking place. And, and even with the uh, recent rains we had here at the beginning of March, uh, we actually able to go and look at waterways or water crossings and see what's flooded out, what repairs need to be done in those areas. So, you know, and, and some of it is potentially just setting up uh, flight patterns. So uh, I tell producers, you know, we can set up, if you want to fly a certain field or fly to look at um, waters, uh, that would be the way to go. So you can set up flight patterns and then would you just tell the drone to go in that pattern and it would go there? So a lot of times, so there's various apps where they're using Android or uh, Apple-based products. You know, what you can do is actually record your flight path. And this is what I typically tell, suggest to producers. You can set up a flight path on a digital map and then go fly that, but you have to always make adjustments. But if you go out there and record your flight path, and I say the first time you fly it, speed isn't really uh, a concern because you're just recording. You can adjust that later on in the settings. But go out there, record your flight path, and you record the waypoint. So that gives you an X, Y, Z coordinate. So that'd be your latitude, longitude, and elevation, and, and other parameters as well. And you record that, fly around your field, record different points. And if, especially if there's an obstacle, if you encounter an obstacle, I always like to do immediately prior, along the way of the obstacle, and then after. Make sure I record plenty of waypoints so the drone knows exactly where to go and how to avoid this obstacle. Absolutely. So I could see where this would save us time. It might make us more efficient about checking fence lines. And so if people want more information, you have a publication. Yep, I have a brand new publication out. So using drones to monitor fence lines. So it's, it's just come out. And so it goes through some of the aspects that you need to, to I, I've talked about today, the frequency of monitoring, uh, what you need to have to monitor, uh, what aspects of the drone you need to have, and some of the costs aspects as well. 
certainly appreciate you visiting with us today. And if you want more information, you can always contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.